If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Romans chapter 12. We're going to read in verse 20. I heard a story this morning that was so encouraging to me. I just want to share it with you as soon as I can, because I think it'll be encouraging for you too. The Apostle Paul says in verse 20, If your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. For in doing so, you will be heaping fiery coals on his head, which actually is a good thing, not a bad thing. If you do that, you're going to burn his hair. No, that's not the point. It's actually a compliment. Anyway, um, do not be conquered by evil, but conquer evil with good. I know we've been talking a lot lately about sharing Christ with people, sharing your faith, praying with people people and seeing how you can start a spiritual conversation. And I want you to be encouraged because you have no idea how God is going ahead of you right now to prepare somebody, maybe a very unlikely somebody, for you to have a spiritual conversation with. I know it's happened in my life more than once. Jesus says, go and make disciples of all nations. And, and there's like, okay, Lord, but I don't know how. Who do I do that? And, and um, I remember, for instance, there was, this, uh, there was this baseball coach back when my oldest son was playing Little League Baseball. I think he was maybe nine years old. And I was just assistant coaching at that point. But I remember there was only one coach in the whole league that I did not want to pick Zachary. I'd coached against him. I'd seen the way he conducted himself. I'd seen the conversations he'd had with some of my friends. And it's just like, okay, Lord, anybody, let him be on any team, just not that guy's team. And sure enough, we get the call, who picks Zachary for his team but Randy? And I remember at first thinking, Lord, are you there? And thinking, nope, yep, God heard my prayer. And if God allowed... Zachary to be on his team, even though I prayed those prayers, then God must be up to something. And sure enough, God was up to something. And Randy became a really close friend. And for years afterward, we would stay in touch. And when he was going through some difficult times, he would call on me. I mean, there was a period, it's just like, I look back on that and see, Randy was one of the most unlikely friends that I would have ever chosen. But God was up to something. There are some unlikely people out there that God wants you to share Jesus with. This is why I tell you that story. Um, I was talking with a Christian writer this morning, Nancy. We're working on a couple of books with somebody else. And she, she's written a number of um, New York Times bestsellers. And, and so she said, she, but she's a Christian woman. Her husband's a Christian lawyer. And she says she's been trolled for a while by this woman who's just very angry and very hateful. Nancy and her husband are Christians. And this woman is, despises Christians, despises Bible stuff, all of that kind of stuff. And just been going on for some time. Well, Nancy found out that this woman lives in New York and is housebound and hasn't been able to get groceries into her to eat. And um, uh, her, she said her, her daughter actually writes for the New York Times. So why the daughter wasn't helping, I'm not quite sure, but just that whole anti-Christian attitude. And so Nancy gave her a call to see how she was doing to listen to her. She told Nancy about her need for food. Nancy and her husband went way out of their way to make some contacts in New York, actually with um, a nun in New York. And this woman has written a bunch on her Twitter stuff about, um, you know, anti-Catholic, anti-nun, and um, and arranged for that nun to take her food. Nancy said, this woman's whole disposition has changed. She is completely softened. Her whole attitude toward Christians and people who believe the Bible has completely transformed. Now, you know, she's not had an Ethiopian eunuch, you know, where is the tub? Why can't I be baptized experience yet? But Nancy was just kind of laughing with us. She was saying, if there was ever one person I never expected that I would be able to share the gospel with, it was this angry, 
anti-Christian, hostile troller in New York City, but I've been able to share Jesus with her. And it made me think of this passage in Romans. If your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give give him something to drink. You know why? Because in the process, you may shock your enemy into seeing and experiencing the love of Christ in a way they never thought imaginable. And just let Jesus take it from there. You know, in the parable of the sower, the sower goes out and scatters the seed everywhere indiscriminately. He doesn't choose the soil the seed falls on. It, he just sows the seed. Hey, you have no idea who Jesus is preparing for you to share the good news with this week. You just need to be ready. And maybe it starts with a cup of cold water or a little food in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, help us not to be conquered by evil, but to conquer evil with good. We're living in a time right now of chaos where there's lots of people and evil, and people are identifying lots of evil that's genuinely evil. But help us to understand what it means to conquer evil with good, with a cup of cold water, with food, with a gentle answer that turns away wrath with the love of Christ, so that Christ may be lifted up. It's through Jesus we pray. Amen. I, I pray that God, that you'll walk with God in an empowered way this week and see his hands at work in you.